Well, good morning, my frugal friends. Today is March 10th, and uh, I'm Crazy Cheap Chick, and thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen today. I'm on day 10 of my grocery challenge, where I am trying to lower my grocery bills. I read last night that um, food costs have gone up like 7.9%, or maybe this morning, read that um, food costs have jumped up almost 8%. I mean, that's a ton. Um, you've got to cut it from somewhere. You've either got to um, find less expensive things to make or take it from your entertainment budget or turn the furnace down. I mean, we only have so much money, right? So um, I my strategy is I'm trying to buy things off the clearance rack and on sale. And um, so far it's working out pretty good. Now I'm not going to the store this morning. I normally run up to my local Dillon's slash Kroger store um, most mornings early and try to see what they have on the clearance rack. Um, but we had, I don't know, we've had about four or five inches of snow so far, and we're supposed to get more, and I just didn't want to get out in the snow. So I'm gonna make do with what I have here, and I have plenty. And so just give me a second, I'll turn the camera around, show you what I'm making for dinner tonight and lunch today. Hold on. So for dinner tonight, we are going to have an old fashioned meatloaf. I haven't made that in a while. Actually, my husband made this. I had gotten some hamburger, got two pounds for $2 off the clearance rack. And so this is about, I don't even know if it's a full pound because when he makes it, he makes the best meatloaf in the world. He uses oatmeal instead of bread and he always sautés about oh, half an onion and half a green pepper. And I don't know what all spices he puts in here. And then um, when he bakes it at the very end, probably the last 10 minutes, he'll take it out and he'll put a nice um, like barbecue glaze on top, but you don't want to do that till the very end or, you know, it'll be all burnt. Um, but it's, it's one of my favorite meals, honestly. And I'm, I'm not a huge hamburger fan, <laughs> but I, I will eat a little bit of this tonight. Um, I grew up on a farm. So I grew up watching my mom and my grandma cook big country meals for like field hands. You know, they're, in the summertime, my grandpa would have a lot of people working for him and they always provided them lunch. And so they'd come back to the house and we'd have a big lunch. And um, that's where I learned how to cook was from watching them. So one thing um, I'm gonna have with this meatloaf is I am gonna make some country green, country style green beans. Now what I did, and if you like Cracker Barrel, then um, these are like Cracker Barrel times 100. Um, they don't make them quite right. Um, most places just, they don't season the green beans so they don't taste very good. What I do is I take, well, what this was, it wasn't even two strips of bacon. I just kind of cut the ends off of a pound of bacon and just took the fat and I cooked the fat down. And then I took most of the fat out once it was cooked. And so then I was just left with, you know, a couple of tablespoons of grease. Then I added um, about half an onion and I cooked those onions. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add the green beans. So here's pan one. I don't usually drain them because they're going to cook down. Oops, that's not it. And they're going to cook down, and so you kind of need that liquid to start out with. And then I'm going to add this. This is about, I, I don't measure, but I would say that's about a heaping tablespoon of sugar. And then I also have some salt and pepper in there. I'm going to dump that in there. I think the sugar is the key. And then next, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of vinegar. I did measure it, and that's a tablespoon of vinegar. I don't know if that's gonna be enough. Um, what I do is cook and taste, cook and taste. If it needs more sugar, I'll add more sugar. If it needs more vinegar, I'll add a little bit more vinegar. The thing is, you don't wanna start out with too much because you can't take it back out. You can always add more. But then you will simmer these green beans for, you know, an hour or two before dinner and most of this liquid will evaporate off and you'll just have some really well seasoned green beans. It's, it's the bacon grease and the vinegar that give it almost like a sweet and sour taste 
and um, they're always really popular with my family, except for my husband who hates green beans. And my grandpa would also not eat green beans because he told me one year during the depression when they were farming that their garden failed and the only thing that grew was green beans. And he said they had green beans, so many meals, um, that that would be about all they had. That he never, he said that year, he told my grandma, I'm never eating another green bean the rest of my life once we get through this. And I don't think he did. He, he uh, I think he kept to that promise and he, he lived to be quite old. So. <laughs> Uh, but I love green beans, and I make them just like my grandma did. This is country-style green beans. They're probably not the healthiest because they do have that bacon grease in them. Um, but it, that's what gives them the flavor. And you, just, you don't need a lot of bacon grease, and you don't need a lot of vinegar. Now, um, we're also going to have mashed potatoes. That's, so we're going to have meatloaf, green beans, and mashed potatoes. And... Um, I don't know, I might make some noodles. I haven't decided yet. Um, since this is kind of a snow, snow day for me, I have a little extra time to cook today. So I may, may make some noodles. That's, I'm not gonna promise on that though. But um, another thing that I'm making tonight is I'm making some stewed apples. And all this is, is, um, you know, Dylan's has apples on sale this week week of March 9th through whatever. Um, five or three pounds of apples for two ninety-seven, I think. You have to download a coupon to get that price. But that's a pound and up, you know, and a dollar a pound. And that's about as low as apples ever get. And I went through my apple drawer in my refrigerator and I had, I don't know, four or five apples that were not real great looking. So I decided that I would cook these up and make stewed apples tonight to go with dinner. This is um, about two tablespoons of sugar and about a teaspoon of cinnamon and maybe half a teaspoon of um, nutmeg that I'm gonna put in there. And uh, this will cook down. I did put just a little tiny bit of water, but I'm probably not gonna need very much water because all the liquid will cook out of these apples and so to spin around. But I think you get the idea. This is really easy to make stewed, stewed apples. Now, I do not like cooked fruit, so I won't eat the cooked fruit and he won't eat the green beans, so I guess it's a trade-off. I may um, cook a little bit more some other vegetable to give him. I don't know. We'll see what I have that needs used up. But it's gonna be a really, you know, a comfort meal. And not real expensive <laughs> because uh, you know, this meatloaf, that's about a dollar's worth of hamburger since I got it on the clearance rack. And um, to be really generous, we'll say a dollar's worth of uh, oatmeal, green pepper, and onion. So about two dollars for this, and this will be more than one meal, of course. The potato, the green beans, about a dollar, because I used two cans, but that's more than one meal. And, uh, to be really generous, I'll say a dollar on the potatoes because the potatoes were on sale for $1.97 last week, and I think I bought four bags. I've already gone through two, and I'm already regretting not buying more. But um, I thought that'd be enough, but we've been eating a lot of potatoes. I'm gonna have to back off on the potatoes. So between meatloaf, $2, uh, green beans, $1, and potatoes, $1, that's gonna be about $4 for the entire meal. If you want to add in about 50 cents of apples, 450, you know, take that divide by, if you divided it by two, that'd be 225 uh, per meal. But like I said, this is way more than two meals. We'll have this for leftovers tomorrow and maybe beyond. I did taste those green beans, and to me, they needed just a little bit more sugar and uh, vinegar and salt and pepper. So I'm adding just a little bit more. But this is one of those things where I say, add a little, taste it, you can always add more. Now, on the vinegar, I used this brand. Um, vinegar's getting kind of high, though. I made this vinegar. Vinegar is so easy to make. I'm probably going to show you someday how to do that because 
It's super easy to make vinegar. Don't have to pay three bucks for a bottle. Um, and then um, I gave those apples a good stir and they are coming along really nicely. Now for lunch, I don't normally show you what we're having for lunch, but I'm going to today since I'm home. <laughs> Um, we're having salad. We're having these salads and you probably wonder what I do with all these vegetables I get. You know, this lettuce, I just wanted to show you, this was that lettuce I got for 25 cents uh, several days ago because it's best day was, um, best by day was March 4th. Today's March 10th. This lettuce is lovely. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this lettuce. So don't don't get frightened off from buying this current stuff. I mean, stuff lasts a lot longer. They have their standards of when they want to sell things by, but usually they're they're good for much longer than that date. Then you probably remember if you've been following me, I had gotten like four trays, four of these vegetable trays. Well, I've already gone through two of them. Um, they were 75 cents. They come with these little um, dressings, which I'll save up dressing, but I don't really like ranch dressing that much. And I, there were a few left in that tray and I kind of combined them into this tray. I still have two trays of these vegetables, but we eat a salad almost every day for lunch because um, I'm, I really try to work in a lot of vegetables. I think that's the healthiest way to eat. And then I'm gonna make um, some potato cabbage soup for lunch. Now, last night I made what I called cabbage steaks. I didn't get a very good picture of it, um, but you know, you slice cabbage in thick slices and you roast it. It doesn't taste anything like steak, but it is really good. I put some seasoning on it and I put a little teriyaki sauce on this, but um, it ended up we didn't eat all of it. And so I'm gonna chop this up and add it to this um, potato soup. I've chopped up that um, roasted cabbage from last night. And now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna throw it in with this potato soup. And one second. I chopped roasted cabbage to that soup and uh, just some cheap steak seasoning. I think this was from Aldi. Not very, didn't cost very much. Um, and now this just has to cook a little bit and we'll be having that soup and a salad for lunch today. Now this all together, <laughs> mm, I know probably not more than two dollars worth of food honestly because all those vegetables were in those clearance containers. Um, just has, all I did was saute some onions, or no wait, what I did was I boiled one potato, um, some of that clearance uh, carrots and celery, and some a little bit of onion. And then I drained off most of the water, added a little bit of cream, about a tablespoon of butter, and um, that chopped roasted cabbage and a little bit of seasoning. And now I'm just gonna cook it until it's done. And uh, I think it's gonna be a pretty hearty meal. I mean, it's really cold and snowy out today. Got a big fire going in the fireplace. It's a perfect day for um, soup and salad. Now, I just wanted to clarify one thing on these green beans, these country style green beans like grandma used to make. Actually, like grandma still makes because I am grandma to seven people. They actually call me Nana, but <laughs> I am a grandma. And so to clarify on when you cook your bacon, like I bought, if you watch my videos, you know I bought a package of bacon yesterday and paid too much for it. Um, I've repackaged this bacon. I cut off each end, you know, where most of that fat is. And that's what I fried up with the onions. And then I removed the little pieces of fat, most of them, because I don't want to eat the fat. But um, they're going to be delicious. I mean, I, I love green beans this way. And uh, I think some of these, uh, how to cook country style is um, a, a skill that people aren't being taught. So this is how you make country style green beans. So here is today's lunch, um, that cabbage potato soup. 
and a nice salad. One thing I added in the salad was a few um, sunflower seeds and a little bit of apple. If you add something just a little bit sweet to a salad, it makes it so much better in my opinion. Maybe a few raisins and apple, um, both pretty healthy. And But the thing I wanted to point out to you is this is a real napkin. Now, these napkins are old and stained up and uh, you know, you can always find napkins on sale after any major holiday. It seems like at Hobby Lobby or Bed Bath & Beyond, those type places. I, I bought these really cheap and uh, I've had them for years and we just keep using them. I just toss them in the washing machine so I don't buy paper napkins very often. Um, and then the other thing is this is a reusable straw and I've had these for years. Um, I bought them. I, I wanted to get away from plastic straws and um, throwing stuff away. These, I just throw them in the um, dishwasher. They, they wash fine and uh, they're just like any other straw, only, you know, they're kind of, I don't know what they're made out of, silicone or rubber or something. Um, but I've had them for years. I haven't bought straws in years. So if you can replace things that you're buying all the time, even though there might be a little bit of investment up front, like I think I, since I bought them so long ago, I don't know what I paid for them, but I don't think they were very expensive. Um, same with the napkins, bought them years ago, still using them, but I haven't had to buy those things in years. So consider maybe investing a little money in reusable products. I'm, I'm hungry. I'll talk to you later. As long as we're talking about reusable items, I wanted to touch on these again. Um, I bought these reusable baggies. I found them at Menards on a, um, like a clearance rack and they were $2.50 for three of them, had three various sizes and I bought all they had. But I had previously found these, um, I think it was these kind, at a one of those stores, you know, close out type stores where people buy pallets of stuff and then sell it. Um, those things seem to be popping up all over the place. And sometimes I find deals in stores like that. Sometimes I don't. But these baggies, I mean, they've just been fabulous. I love them. And I'm trying to get away from anything that I have to buy over and over and over. Um, a box like this, I, I can't remember what it costs now. It seems like it's $2.99 or $3.99 for 50 when I got three for less than what the, the box cost. So over time, I think these are gonna be um, way less expensive than buying baggies, better for the environment. But also I just love them because, because they're so thick, um, I can put stuff in the freezer and things don't get freezer burnt. Um, they're more durable. I, I have no problem um, washing them. I had originally, I didn't have this at first. I found this at a thrift store for $2.99. I think it's actually for like baby stuff. I don't know. Um, but I had looked for it at online on Amazon, Bed Bath & Beyond. It seemed like it was $20, $25. So I had kind of put off buying it. And I'm glad I did because I ended up finding it at the thrift store. And this is the kind of thing that you find in thrift stores all the time because people use them for a limited amount of time and then get rid of all their baby stuff. And at first I didn't have this, so I just washed them and laid them in the sun and they dried fine, but this actually works a whole lot better. And then the other thing that I got, now I did pay full price for these. I bought these online at Amazon about a year ago and they're reusable paper towels. I mean, they're not paper, but reusable towels. And you just, you pull it off like a paper towel and um, use them like a paper towel, but then you just throw them in the wash. And some of them are getting a little worn and stained in there. Some of them I've never even reached yet because I just keep reusing the same ones over and over. And I don't know what it is about this cloth. They stick to each other. And so that's what keeps them on the roll. I tried to make my own. I had bought some microfiber like dishcloths, but they wouldn't stick together like this. But I'm gonna see if I can find some other material because if I can, I have been saving 
these paper towel holders whenever I run across one. I'm gonna try to make my kids um, some reusable paper, uh, reusable towels like I have, only I don't wanna spend $25 for it. Um, I think when I got them, they said to wash them in the wash, but then lay them flat to dry, which I did for about two weeks. And then I'm like, oh, this is too much work. So then I started throwing them in the washing machine. They've done just fine. And I wash them in the washing machine, dry them in the dryer. I do not lay them out flat though. That's what they recommend. They do, if you do lay them out flat though, whatever this material is, it dries really fast within like two or three hours. But now I'm not buying baggies and I'm not buying paper towels. And paper towels, I mean, they're ridiculously expensive. Um, and then the other thing, I'm gonna brag on myself a little bit because this paper towel holder, it had broken. Um, this thing had come loose, it was real wobbly. And I was gonna buy a new one. I went to Walmart and it seemed like they had, all they had were really ugly towel holders and they were kinda, they were just metal, metal towel holders and they, the cheapest one was like 15, 20 bucks. So that kind of motivated me to buy some super glue and try to fix this. And for about a dollar's worth of super glue in five minutes, um, I got this thing fixed. Now it took another 10, 15 minutes to get the super glue off my hands because <laughs> I can't seem to use super glue without getting it all over my fingers. It's always so annoying. But I mean, a dollar as opposed to buying a new one. It, I mean, when I was growing up, we fixed things. We didn't throw things away. And now, you know, we're kind of a throwaway society, but with prices going up, I think we're gonna have to go back to fixing things. The other day, my husband um, brought out a shirt and it was, he's like, oh, a button came off here. And I thought in my head, oh, throw it away. Cause I, don't want to, I didn't want to get out the sewing kit and sew on a button. I mean, that's so lazy on my part. I could sew a button on a shirt in three minutes and I'm going to. But anymore, in general, we don't do that. <laughs> we throw, when things break, we throw them away instead of fixing them. And so we're probably gonna have to get back to if we're gonna save money, we're gonna have to learn how to fix things. And it's pretty easy with the internet because you can Google anything. My daughter, um, she had a problem with her car. She Googled it, Googled it, went to the auto parts store and fixed it herself and probably saved herself a couple hundred bucks just because she Googled something and fixed it herself. It wasn't hard at all. Um, so think about it. I mean, they, the internet wasn't around when I was growing up. We couldn't Google things. But now with the internet, um, you can Google almost anything and figure out how to do it. Frugal friends, we made it through another day and I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. If you got anything at all out of this video, please like and consider subscribing. I'm very new to this. Um, it's hard for someone my age to um, pick up on some of this technology. So um, be patient and kind. And I'm gonna leave you with a final video that will hold, hopefully help you distress. Take a moment and watch it snow in the country. It's beautiful out today.